You see, in 2002, I came to the US with $30,000 in my pocket, and today I am a multimillionaire. So people ask me all the time, how did you do that? And most importantly, they want to know what would you do in 2022 if you had to start over? So in this video, I want to show you the three bucket system that I've been using for the past, I don't know, what is it, 20 years for creating wealth. We'll also talk about how much money should you put into your trading account. We'll talk about how to grow your trading account fast. We'll also cover the topic of should you put all of your money into your trading account or should you have some other investments? And if so, what should you do? And I'll show you exactly how I personally manage my money. So let's get started and let's jump over here actually to the handy dandy notepad where we can talk about the three buckets. Now, as you know, I love trading. So no surprise here that bucket number one of how to create wealth for me personally is trading. So the goal here with trading is to make 30% uh, to 60% per year. So that is the idea here in general. Let's talk about the three buckets at first and then I'll show you what the goals of each buckets are, how much money I think you should do uh, put into these buckets and what to do if you don't have a lot of money for trading just yet. The bucket number two is investing. And there's a huge difference between trading and investing. And we'll talk about this. And then the bucket three is for crazy ideas. And we will talk about these because you'll see that's a lot of fun. But let's get started. Let's talk about bucket number one first because that is for trading. Now, here is what I love about bucket number one. This is where you can start small and grow big. Now, when, when I say start small, as you know, when I came to the US more than 19 years ago, I put $20,000 in my trading account, but I made a lot of mistakes and I traded it down to $8,000. But that is the great thing. You can actually start with a small account. But since the question always comes, okay, here in 2022, Marcus, what would you do? What account size would you start with? And what would you do if you don't have this money? That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So the idea is to trade for a living. What does this mean? It means that at some point you have your trading account at a size where all the profits that you're making, you can transfer out of your trading account into your checking account. Here's the good news. This is where you can calculate how much you need to have in your trading account. Let's just say that you are trying to make a 60% per year. Or no, let's uh, do it the other way around. Let's just say that uh, your goal is to make $100,000 with trading per year. Now, you know that when you are trading a margin account, you can actually make 60% based on your cash. But let's start with a, with a 30%. So how big does your account need to be? And in order to do this, all we need to do is take this $100,000 that you want to make, divide it by 0 0.3, and this gives us an account of, there we go, $333,000. Here's the good news. You don't need to have all of this in cash. So if you choose to use a margin account, you only need half of this. So this means that you need, uh, what, uh, around, uh, let's just say, $170,000 in cash. Now you might say, oh my gosh, Marcus, that's great, but I don't have right now $170,000 in cash. This is what we'll talk about. I'll show you exactly what, what I would do if I didn't have this money. I wanna show you exactly with what account size I would start and how I would plan to grow this account. But let's talk about the risk here, because if you try to make 30 to 60% per year, there is some risk involved. It means that you could lose 30% to 50% of your account while you are trading. Now, I personally don't think that you should lose more of this because I think that you should trade this account rather conservatively. This is where on this channel, we always talk about SRC profits, right? Systematic, repeatable, and also consistent. What would I do if I didn't have this $170,000 in cash? 
let's talk about investing here. So when we talk about investing, what do I mean here? So examples of investing that I would do, and I have been doing a lot of this in the past, is real estate. And we'll talk about how everything flows into the buckets, how much money you should have in, in one account versus the other one. So I've been investing in real estate. Um, let's see, I started trading in 2002 and I've been investing in, in real estate since 2000 and I want to say seven, 2006, 2007. I would have to look it up. So that is one way to do this. Now, you could also invest in dividend stock. So the idea here is that you're buying a stock and you're holding it for the long run here and you're just collecting dividends. You could also try to get into index funds. And with investing, let's talk about the goal here as well. So the goal here is that you're making 10 to 20 percent per year. And I believe that this is possible with real estate investing. I believe that this is possible with dividend investing. I believe that this is possible with index funds. You could do some hard money lending if you are in this. So the goal here is that you want to have a very conservative account. So this is also a long term account. For me, let's just actually say here the goals are to make 10 to 20 percent per year. This investment is more longer term, which means that you're talking about uh, multiple years. So especially if you're investing in real estate, you know, unless you're doing some crazy flips, if, if you're buying a house or an apartment complex to rent it out, it might take multiple years before you can sell it again. And uh, the idea here is that you are creating net worth because the idea is that you're investing in assets that appreciate over time. Now, there's also some risk involved here, but the risk obviously is lower. And this is where you see the less money you want to earn, the less risk is involved. So I believe personally that it is possible to lose 10 to 20 percent of your account, right? So let's just, in order to complete the notes and make it consistent with what we had here, could lose 10 to 20%. So you already get the idea, right? If you're trying to make 30 to 60% per year, we have to take some risk on. If you're trying to make less, there's less risk. The least risk is if you're putting money into a CD or into a savings account, you're not making any money, but you're also don't have the risk of losing any money. Again, I, I want to show you exactly what I believe, how much money you should put into these different buckets here. But let's talk about these crazy ideas first. So what is this crazy idea bucket and when should you use it? So the goal here is to make 400% to 1000%. So this is really just some crazy stuff. So for example, you would invest in some cryptocurrencies. So let's say you are expecting next year Bitcoin to go to 500,000 or to 100,000 only. That's already enough. Right now it's trading at 50,000. So cryptocurrencies would be one of the things. Biogen stocks, for example, a crazy idea that you might have here. And let's talk about BIIB. They are inventing an Alzheimer drug, right? And this is where you see, oh my gosh, this is going from $200 to $400. Or this could be something crazy like the meme stocks, AMC, where you think this is going to the moon or, or GME or whatever crazy ideas here you might have. This is where you actually have one of these fun accounts, right? So this is Biogen. It could be your friend's crazy idea, right? Where he said, I have this hot stock that is going up like crazy, right? So the goal here is to create some fun money. So what does it mean with, with this fun money that you can buy some crazy stuff? I don't know. Maybe you want to buy a new car. Maybe you just want to buy an expensive grill like a, a green egg or a Kamado Joe or whatever these are called where you buy a two or three thousand dollar grill or something crazy. Maybe you want to buy a boat. Maybe you want to buy a yacht, something like this, right? However, here is the problem. This is where the risk is really, really high. So risk is you could lose 50 percent, maybe even up to 100 percent. I mean, I would say probably more 50 to 80 percent. So the more return you expect here, the more risk you could have. So let's talk about these different buckets here. Then again, as promised, I'll tell you what I would do if I didn't have the money for trading right now. Let's talk about some asset allocation. Here is what I think is a good asset allocation. And again, I'm just sharing what has worked for me. For you, it might be completely different. Bucket one, which is the trading bucket. Let's just say 
In this bucket, you put $250,000 with margin, it would give you around $500,000 in buying power. If this is the case, in bucket two for investing, I would allocate approximately 2 million. So definitely way more, which is rather on the safe side, because again, trading is risky. Yes, you can grow your account quickly and you can lose some money. I would say that here it would make sense to invest one to two million dollars into a uh, safe haven investments like again real estate nothing crazy here right super solid multi-family units or maybe single family homes something like this then in bucket three for the crazy ideas i would put around twenty five thousand dollars twenty five thousand dollars to fifty thousand dollars into this one and here is the exact order for me personally this is what i did i started with bucket number one I started with trading and then as I was generating money with trading, I started using some of the profits here and invested it in real estate. Now, I want to be absolutely honest. In the beginning, my first real estate investment was probably it was around $30,000, right, that I had to put down for my first investment property. But then over time, you're generating some momentum. You get the idea, right? And then eventually, and this is where it should be bucket three crazy ideas. This is when you really have money that you don't care about, where you say, you know what, this $25,000, I don't care if I lose all of this, right? I mean, this is absolutely fine. The question is right now, if I didn't have $170,000 to put into my trading account, what exactly would I do? Personally, as you know, this is what I said earlier, I started with $20,000 and traded the account down to $8,000. So here is what I have found. I have found over the years that it is extremely difficult, extremely difficult to grow such a small account. It will take you a long time. So here's what I would do, okay? So I would start with at least $25,000 that I would put into a margin account to turn into $50,000 in buying power. I'm abbreviating this with BP. This is still not the $170,000, but then I would grow this to whatever I need here, right? It could be $150,000, could be $170,000 based on what I chose, how much money I need for a living. And this might be differently for you. So how do I get the first $25,000 if I don't have this or how to grow this account fast? Well, <laughs> here's something that I'm telling you right now. What I would do if I lost it all and I had to start over, because now I'm way smarter. I've been trading, I've been investing in real estate. And uh, let me tell you of what I would do in order to get these $25,000. Well, I would try to earn more. And that's probably not what you want to hear, right? Because what does it mean uh, that you have to, at least for a while, work for somebody and make him money or work in your own business, have your own business. So have a side gig because I really have found, and I'll do another coffee with Marcus about this, how difficult it is to do a small account. Now, I, I won't let you hanging with this here that I just say, oh yeah, you know what? You, you should just work more and maybe do uh, drive an Uber. No, that's not it. I want to give you uh, very specific what I would do here. So one of the important concepts is I ran across this a few months ago, and I don't know if you heard about this already. So there's this, this idea about Ikigai, the Japanese concept of finding purpose in life. So here is what it is. So the idea is to find something, what you love to do. And I'll give you some examples here in a moment. You also try to figure out what the world needs, what you can be paid for and what you're really good at. And, and this is something where you should probably light a candle, take a bubble bath to figure this out. But think about this, what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs and what you can be paid for. Now, let me give you a few examples and I want to give you actually five examples here where you might say, oh my gosh, I can absolutely do this. So example number one is Steve Jobs. I mean, everybody uses him and you might not be Steve Jobs, but you see, he was doing something that he loved, that he was good at. He gave the world something that 
the world needed. I mean, these iPhones, these smartphones, we didn't know that yet, but we needed those. And what can you be paid for? We know that this works, but maybe there's some other things. You might say, I'm not no Steve Jobs. I don't know. Have you ever heard about this lady? This lady is called Marie Kondo. She is just great in organizing and has made a whole business around this, about organizing and it is charging others to help them organize their closet. So maybe you are good at organizing. You know what? Maybe you're good at playing video games. Maybe you love playing Minecraft and I'm just using Minecraft because I'm not into playing video games and that's the only one that I know. And look at this. The search volume on YouTube is 481 million searches per month. Is this something that the world needs? And uh, you see there's this dude here, yeah, Jaron, uh, that actually built 25 Minecraft farms for this one project at 30,000 views. Only seven hours ago. Look at this. There is people who are right now watching this. 3,300. There is millions of views. Coronation Catastrophe, King of Atlantis. Oh no, that's something else probably. But you get the idea. There's a lot of views here. Now you might say, I'm not good at this. Now you just need to have a crazy idea. Let me give you two more examples here. I don't know if you heard about this guy, Megalag. I mean, here is what he did. <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. He actually used these air tags, you know, the air tags from Apple, and he sent an air tag to North Korea, to Tim Cook and Elon Musk, and all he did on his computer, he was tracking it. He was actually thinking about sending one to the White House, but his lawyer said, don't do that. You'll get in trouble for this. Take a look at this. This guy received on this one video here, two million views, two million views. And all he did, he sent an air tag to North Korea. Has he been doing a lot of videos? Absolutely not. If, if you look at his videos, he did a total of uh, what? 11 videos, that's all. Now this one video, this air sending the air tag to North Korea, has probably made him $20,000. So there's your stuff right there. Okay, let me give you a fourth one. Uh, before I do, is this helpful? And then uh, we'll also take a look at these three buckets one more time. But is this helpful at all? If it is, do me a favor and uh, give me a like. This way I know that you're having fun with this video because I'm having fun making this for you. Now I wanna show you one more. This is somebody, uh, I don't know if you heard about this lady. Her name is Celeste Barber. And what Celeste Barber uh, does, um, I just went to her Facebook page. She looks at uh, some videos that are awesome and then does her own version of this. So you see, she found this video probably somewhere on Instagram of a model dancing and something really cool. And then it's her. She's filming herself trying to replicate this. Now, is she sexy as a model? No, but it's hilarious. It's funny. Look at this. She does this where he says the holidays can be rough. So she found this picture and then she's replicating the picture in her own style and people find it hilarious. And she has, I don't know, uh, millions of followers and viewers. And uh, this is how you can monetize this. Okay, let me come back to you. So this is that you see that there are some crazy ideas. So that's when I say, earn more, work for somebody, work in your own business or have a sidekick and put every thousand dollars aside until you have at least $25,000 and you might already have some money on the side that you can start with this. Now, how do you grow this account fast? Put every cent you can into this account. And I know that this is not popular. You probably think, uh, well, what about if I if I start with this crazy idea? Well, what about if I if I start with this and I invest everything in in a meme stock, for example, in in Game Stock or in AMC or I don't know, in some crazy stocks, in some crazy Barry Jane stock? No, I mean this is not the right order. Again, for me personally, uh, what I found is that it works best if I start with the first bucket, which is trading, then move on to investing, and then actually go on to the third bucket where we do some crazy ideas here. Anyhow, has this been helpful? If it has, then uh, give me a like and I'll also link to a few videos right now that show you exactly how I trade these markets so that you see my trading routine and see exactly what I do and what trading strategies I use.